It's appropriate to begin our discussion about cells with some of the early scientists that were involved in microscopes and some of the early discoveries revolving around cells. The first guy we need to talk about is Robert Hooke. He's an English scientist who is making his big discoveries in 1665, and he's actually the one who ends up coining the term cells for us. The thing he's looking at under the microscope when he coins the term cells are actually cork cells, which, uh, if you don't know, cork actually comes from the bark of a cork tree. So he's looking at plant cells, and he's using a very, very simple microscope. We looked at pictures of this before, back when we first covered microscopes, but his microscope is extremely simple, and it is a light microscope, but it's only got a very, very coarse adjustment, which would use uh, sort of like a screwing feature on the bottom of this that would allow him to either move his objective lens closer or further away from a sample at the bottom, and a, a very, very kind of crude um, ocular lens up there at the top that he's actually looking through. There would usually be some kind of a device that was used to focus light, whether it would be the light from a lamp, like an oil lamp, or the light just from outside if he's using it during the daytime on the samples. Uh, it's interesting that these are two separate devices that were used, one to focus the light and then the other one to actually look at the specimen. But uh, again, he's looking at cork under the microscope and he comes up with the term cells because the cork itself reminds him of the tiny cells used in monasteries. Like Monasteries are where priests are living at this time and uh, he then uses that term to describe the cork itself. I'm just going to get this stuff out of the way so you can see the picture a little bit. Uh, this is actually the book that he published. It's called Micrographia, which you can see up here in the top. And this is a drawing that he made of some of the cork specimens that he was looking at under the microscope. And you can see all those little individual dots in there. Those are the individual plant cells that he was looking at. So he writes all about it in his book, and this starts this whole revolution of people realizing that there is this microscopic world around us that they can examine through the microscope. Uh, another guy that we talked about earlier was Anton van Leeuwenhoek. You might remember his name from back when we were talking about Reddy and Spallanzani and some of the other scientists that were looking at things revolving around uh, whether or not life could spontaneously generate. But Leeuwenhoek uh, was the one who was using a simple microscope, and he coined the term animacules, which you may remember from before, which he said they were tiny little animals living in pond water. And this is actually a representation of one of his drawings. And he saw these tiny little animals that were living in pond water samples. One of the things that we'll actually do this chapter is look at pond water under the microscope. And there are plenty of things in there that are large enough for you to see, even on relatively low power. Because remember, the microscopes we're using, even though they're light microscopes, just like the ones that Leeuwenhoek and um, Robert Hooke were using, they are far more complicated. And they're far more... Uh, they're capable of much higher levels of magnification. But even on low power in pond water samples, you'd be able to see a substantial amount of organisms. So you'll see that in class. I mean, our lowest power is 40 times magnification, which is probably about what Leeuwenhoek and Robert Hooke were experiencing. And even with that, you can see things like the algae that's uh, represented here. You can also see some of the diatoms and things that are in the water. So there's plenty of things that you can see under the microscope, even on low magnification. That's the stuff that Leeuwenhoek was witnessing under the microscope. So in order to start our discussion of cells, we have to go back to some of these individuals that went through and had discoveries that build our understanding. Altogether, the different discoveries made by individuals in the beginning of our study of cells is all put together into something called cell theory, which we'll read about in a little bit. Uh, there are many scientists that contribute to this. There's Theodore Schwann, uh, Matthias Schleiden, Rudolf Virchow, uh, lots and lots of individuals, and you'll actually work on a timeline for that stuff in class. But the main two that you need to know are Anton van Leeuwenhoek and Robert Hooke, because they were the first two, and uh, they really got things published and got ideas out there. And once people were reading about their experiments and how they developed their light microscopes, uh, people were building off of their ideas, and that's really when uh, we started having a lot of discoveries in the area on cells. So as always, thank you for watching, and uh, pick up with the next one, which will talk about the cell theory itself. Thank you.